Hello everybody, and today I wanted to make a quick video on Meta and uh, the layoff of 11,000 people that they've, they've announced. Um, actually, this is a follow-up to my video from two weeks ago where I was talking about how crazy it was for a company like, like Meta to be trading at a PE of 9. Um, and I didn't buy the stock. I'm still not buying the stock. The stock is growing at 10 to 15% a year. That's not high enough growth for me. So I, I haven't bought the stock, even though it, it's tempting. Um, but today, uh, Meta is up. Today, Wall Street loves Meta. Um, and uh, that's because of that layoff. So briefly, Meta, what are some of the reasons why you, why uh, people would want to invest in Meta? Well, it's a low growth, huge moat company, right? They have four major apps with 3.7 billion users, a huge network effect. It's going to be very hard for anybody to uh, be the social media giant. Meta is, as much as some people say TikTok is a threat, Meta is still the, the, the number one. Um, they have a lot of earnings, right? 34 billion a year in earnings with only a market cap of 275 billion. So Wall Street should love those earnings. They've announced a buyback. The stock is down 70%. So they're buying back their stock. Again, Wall Street should love that. Should love that. They have 17.7 billion left in their buyback facility to buy back our stock. Um, and the, the thing that appealed to me the most about, about, about Meta is their bet on this long-term future, their 10-year bet, bet on the metaverse, on developing something new, on actually building to enhance their product and thinking about the future. Uh, that's, that's the one thing that I liked about Meta. Wall Street hated that. And today, um, Meta, I think, has followed Wall Street's advice, and they've laid off 11,000 people. 11,000 people of, you know, you got to realize, I, I have multiple friends, very, very smart people who have applied at Meta. Like, Meta is a very, 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 very hard company to get into. Uh, and they are laying off 11,000 people. So that, that is a huge layoff. Um it's not a very good thing for a metaverse, I don't think. It doesn't. It, it doesn't speak good for the metaverse. Doesn't speak good for some of their innovation, but it speaks very good for the issues of today, which is today right now the market short term, and it only cares about short term. So here's why I think it's a positive for the stock, as terrible as it is for the people who are getting laid off. It is. It is. It is just terrible. Eleven thousand jobs in one one shot is crazy. Why is this good for the stock? Because they are not putting as much money into the metaverse. When they, if you read the letter of Zuckerberg, they'll say we're going to focus only on the long-term aspects of the metaverse. So that means uh, that they are not focusing on this moonshot that the metaverse is as much. And the recession that we're settling in right now really, really means that those moonshot projects are, are not going to be valued by the market. So again, they're putting a pause on the metaverse, continuing on, on that strategy of putting a pause on the metaverse, and it will take much longer for the metaverse to, to, uh, to manifest itself and become a thing. Um, and right now, it seems to be the right move, because look at today's Ro Roblox earnings today. Roblox is down 70%. Roblox is technically the only real metaverse we have out there, and they're down 17%. So clearly, them moving away from that is a short-term positive. Another short-term positive is they're refocusing on AI and recommender systems, right? This is very, very good. Um, they got to work on their AI if they want to gain back the business that they've lost from Apple privacy changes. There's other ways to track um, to track your, your your users, and AI has to learn those new ways of doing it. And AI will overcome that and will learn that while also respecting privacy. But that's going to take probably a few years. And by re refocusing the energy of your people on doing this, that means that you may you, you may get a better recommendation recommendation system sooner. And again, this is going to help the market, which is very short-term oriented right now. And recommender systems uh, for their content is essential, again, if you want to beat TikTok. If you, if you dig deep into the strategy of TikTok, they're really, really good at recommending this short, addictive content. And if they invest in those, they have a chance along with YouTube Shorts, uh, with Instagram Reels, they have a, sh a chance um, at competing against TikTok. 
Um, and in general, you want to see big tech invest in AI. Uh, that is so important to the future. And Meta has invested so much in AI research. Uh, I suggest if you want a, a sneak peek as to what the future is going to look like, I suggest you go to make a video that's studio and try to look at some of the stuff that they do. Um, it's absolutely insane. You write a short text and a video is made. Thousands of exemplars of one video is made. And so that is absolutely the future. The future for creators is AI enhanced content. And you can imagine the future where you can have a creator 10 years from now, dictate a few sentences and then Meta makes a short film. That's that's the kind of thing that you, you know I, I think is a great thing for Meta to invest in. Focusing back on the AI, focusing back on the ads, and right now slowing down investments in the metaverse because the market is not giving them any credit for that. Um, and of course, the, the sad consequence is eleven thousand dollars, and and we're slowing the pace of innovation, which is also I think uh, overall what works for society to slow the pace of innovation, regardless of whether someone agrees or not with the metaverse, like regardless of whether you agree or not, like they had some really cool stuff and really cool innovations. And there's very compelling cases for the metaverse, just like there's compelling cases for, you know, conference calls and actually meeting online. There's compelling cases for that. And, and unfortunately, we'll have to wait longer to see them come to, to fruition. What are some of the negatives, right? So I don't like that short-term focus. It always makes me uneasy. Whenever there's short-term focus, that's when a disruptor can come and take over. And so clearly Facebook is, is looking at short-term. I'm also becoming more and more concerned at the impact of Twitter on companies like Meta or YouTube, um, YouTube belonging to Google, because uh, Elon Musk has had Big plans, if you, if you read the early plans for the, the X super app, you realize that Elon Musk has big ambitions uh, and he has capital. He has a lot of capital and a lot of big ambitions. And he also is very, very good at AI. I suggest you look up some of the stuff that, that AI does and OpenAI does. Um, I think that could be a little bit of a threat for Facebook, which is, which is once again ties into that. Why I don't like seeing a short term focus. And something that Facebook can't control uh, is, of course, the fact that TikTok is still allowed in the USA. And that is a negative. There is a movement, a, a bipartisan movement, actually, to ban TikTok. Because, again, is it really fair that TikTok can just do whatever they want in the US? And Meta is not even allowed to enter China. It's like our companies are not even allowed to compete there. But Chinese companies are allowed to compete in the USA. So it, it makes, you know, it, 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 at least in the tech world, right? Not, not in like the manufacturing world, but in the tech world, very much protectionism when it comes to China, very little protectionism when it comes to the US, when it comes to tech, uh, at least social media tech. And so that would be a catalyst for the stock. Actually, I think it would be a huge catalyst for the stock if TikTok was banned or impeded in some way. And overall, the fact, even though for the long term, this is this is a negative for the long term for Meta. For the short term, I think this is a positive for the market. Because whether we want it or not, a lot of people still own Meta, right? I mean, my only exposure to Meta is through uh, my retirement, my retirement account. If you look at if you look at most growth funds available for 401ks, depending on the growth fund that you choose, it's between two and three percent of the whole index. So whether or not you care about Meta or buy Meta directly, it's what it does, what Meta does impacts the retirements of millions and millions and millions of people. Um, so that's a short term positive, I believe, at the expense of the long term. Um, but let's talk about the broader picture of the Fed. 11,000 people laid off. That is a huge layoff, especially in, in, in that, that like tech sector where Facebook is really, again, it's, I mean, fa Facebook is not Peloton. Facebook is top, top, top. Facebook is not Snapchat. And Facebook is laying off people. Um, and that is what the Fed is trying to achieve right now, right? We have to bring it back to the conversation of the Fed, you know? The Fed wants to control inflation. That is their mandate. But they are, inflation is mostly supply-driven. They have no impact on supply. So what do they do to fix inflation? They must 
shock or electrocute the system with sudden, unanticipated, not anticipated, very, very rapid rise in interest rates. That's what they've done. They've done well over a tenfold increase in interest rates in a very, very small amount of time to stun the markets, to create a short shock. So they're overdoing QT, hoping that those problems in the economy manifest themselves in the form of less spending. And one of the issues that happens when you tighten so fast is that Facebook, when Facebook hired a bunch of people, they they were not planning on financial tightening this, this fast, right? They were planning on the roaring 2020s. That's what they were planning on. They thought we were out of the crisis. And so they invested heavily in the economy. Uh, but they've been stunned. They've been shocked by this, this rapid rise in interest rates. Really, really companies, I mean, the few companies that predicted that, good for you, because most didn't. And so what that means is that, of course, the firm has to be agile. The firm has to adapt to the macro. And so they decide to do layoffs. So layoffs equals less spending. If you get laid off, you spend less because you lose your job, right? If you spend less, there's less demand for stuff of any kind. And that is theoretical here. And if, you less demand, if there's less demand for stuff, prices drop. That's the whole idea. And look at the tech layoffs. There have been huge tech layoffs. I mean, even Tesla fired 5% of its staff. Like, it's insane the number of layoffs. There have been huge layoffs. All over tech, but not just tech. You know, Wells Fargo was talking about laying off half of its mortgage bankers, realtors, realtors having to look jobs, contractors, anything in retail, supply chain, if anybody in logistics, there's layoffs all over the economy. These layoffs will translate into less spending, less spending, less demand for stuff, and the prices will go down. And as soon as the prices go down, the Fed will engage into QE again. And they will engage into QE again, because again, all of these layoffs mean that unemployment will be high. And unemployment is a lagging indicator. I happen to believe that QE will resume much sooner than people think because of a deficit. I think the deficit will force the Fed to get back into QE, the US government deficit. I think they'll be forced to get back into QE because of a deficit much quicker than the imbalance of employment and unemployment leads them to get back to QE. But but getting back to QE, I do believe, is going to be um, the, the only way going forward. Uh, that's 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 what I believe. That's why the channel is named Beat the Denominator. That's why I named it Beat the Denominator. So overall, good thing for the short term, bad for the long term. Again, this is entertainment only, not investment advice. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like my video. And I'm also starting a Twitter. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, I hope to post a few threads at some point in the future about these stocks that I analyze. So thank you so much for watching and uh, have a great day.